Hello friends, I'm Pranali from Isa Pune and today I'll be sharing with you some activities I've designed to teach the topic plant and animal cell organelles at the 8th standard level. As we all know, in biology, it's not always suitable to teach a certain topic with um, activity-based approach. So instead, uh, we can try to create some models and use them as analogy. And uh, I'll show you how I have created some models to teach the topic cell organelles. In this lesson plan, I'll show you how I have created models of cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, mitochondria, Golgi complex, endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes, and chloroplasts to teach the topic different plant and animal cell organelles. So I've noticed that a lot of students tend to memorize rather than developing concepts while studying this subject. To remove this block, what we need to do is we need to get students to appreciate the beauty of biological processes, functions, and the things that we cannot see with our naked eyes. Keeping this in mind, I designed the lesson plan by emphasizing on their roles first. So to kickstart the lesson plan and develop students' interest, you can begin with explaining the cell using an analogy. You can compare a cell with a school, your school. So you can ask students to enlist all the structural components that are necessary to the school and then students can discuss amongst themselves which one is analogous to which cell organelle. You can guide students to identify these components. For example, main office with principal's room and teacher's room works as the nucleus of a cell. The verandas and hallways connecting the main office or teacher's room with the classroom is analogous to endoplasmic reticulum. Wall surrounding the school is like a rigid cell wall in plant cells or a wire fence like a cell membrane in animal cells, while the gates or doors work as selective opening like in cell membranes. Cupboards and bags that contain teaching or learning materials resemble to the role of Golgi apparatus. Storerooms of the school are analogous to the vacuoles in the cell. Powerhouse of the school is the classroom with active students like the mitochondria in a cell etc. However, we need to be very careful while selecting the analogy to ensure not to introduce any sort of misconceptions in the classroom. I suggest you to explore other organizations as an analogy also, for example, a city, a factory or a machine and see which one works for you better. Next, along with these models, it's good to make students to see the actual cells under the microscope first. So you can prepare slides with plant and animal cells and ask students to note down which cell organelles they were able to identify with the help of the figures given in their textbooks and also note down the other observations. While doing this, we are supposed to emphasize on two things. One, the size of the cell. Students have anyways learned the atom and molecule size in the chemistry classes. So while observing the slides, they'll be able to appreciate the number of atoms and molecules that are required to make one single cell. Two, the arrangement of the organelles. Which organelles are present randomly in the cells? Which of them have the fixed positions? And which ones are closer to each other? So now that the students know what's inside the cell, we can move on to what students can make or do inside the classroom. The first cell organelle we can begin with is cell membrane. You can begin with showing them an image of a lipid bilayer and introduce the first main property of cell membrane, selective permeability. Here's how I have explained selective permeability through a demonstration. We need a glass of water, vinegar, sugar syrup and eggs. To explain osmosis, I used egg as a representative of a cell. I took two eggs and submerged them in vinegar solution for 24 hours until the eggshells dissolve. I put one egg in water, which is a hypotonic solution, and another in a thick sugar syrup, which is a hypertonic solution for a day. The class compared the size of these eggs to normal eggs. We can now explain to students just the way that egg has absorbed the water from its surroundings Cells also absorb the essential material such as nutrients from the surrounding matrix. We can now move on to the next organelle, the matrix in the cell, the cytoplasm. For this model, we need jelly or sugar syrup, ziplock or sealable plastic bag and play clay. I made a sugar solution or jelly solution 
and poured it in ziplock or sealable plastic bag this acted as semi fluid cytoplasm i used beads to represent the cell organelles if time permits you can make small models or organelles using play clay you should bring students attention to how the beads are suspended in the solution this will help you explain the semi fluid nature of the cytoplasm that provides structural rigidity to the cell and the second important function is holding and transporting the important substances that are required for the processes in each organelle the next cell organelle is nucleus this is where the dna is localized and i made the model to explain this the function of dna is explained very well in the lesson plan of heredity and variation the link to which is in the description box for this model we need a small plastic ball a few pink and blue woolen threads the ridges and the grooves in the ball can be used to represent nuclear envelope and nuclear pores tangle together a few pink and blue woolen threads at the center to represent chromatin network the chromatin network is shown by tangled threads and not typically x shaped because the model is not showing one of the mitosis phases we may give a brief overview to the students about the dna inside the nucleus wherein the blueprint of all the important cellular processes can be found next we can talk about mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell this model of mitochondria was made using a potato and some cloves if you ask your students what is the most distinctive feature of the mitochondria some would say the folded in a membrane or criste looked weird others claimed the cloves or atp synthesis sticking out was strange they would also notice that the thread used to represent dna was present in this you can pose a question how does the mitochondria energize the cell students can answer based upon the types of energies they know they can also rule out few like electrical energy wind energy or solar energy but once someone brings up chemical energy what they'll realize is this can happen inside cell once we understand the function of mitochondria we can begin with the explanation of the structure of mitochondria naturally the next topic to discuss will be how the energy is used to put the plan into action you may explain students that the two cell organelles involved here will be endoplasmic reticulum and the golgi apparatus over here i prefer to give the analogy of a factory over a school you can explain the two types of endoplasmic reticulums with the help of the model we need thick colored paper strips glue beads or clay balls take two to three thick colored paper strips and glue them together lengthwise fold one end of the strip and stick it with the help of glue like so and continue folding the strip and sticking it to make the endoplasmic reticulum model make a few more of such shapes in varied lengths to make the complete endoplasmic reticulum use beads or clay balls to represent the ribosomes while making rough endoplasmic reticulum model these endoplasmic reticulum models can also be attached to the nucleus model that we made in the previous activity to show the connection between nucleus and the endoplasmic reticulum after the discussion the students can be assessed by asking them to label all the parts of er by using paper tags or asking them to write the names on the chart paper you can give a brief overview and discuss the importance of proteins with the students earlier in fact what you can do is you can give them an assignment and ask them to enlist 5 to 10 different processes or actions a human body performs wherein proteins are involved i'm very sure they'll be able to find numerous names of proteins that are involved in the perfect actions for example you can find vision vision is possible due to rhodopsin sugar metabolism it's possible due to insulin the proteins are now ready in the er let's move on to the next cell organelle cells packaging and transporting service golgi apparatus you can use an analogy or create a story around golgi let's say a golgi should wrap the protein it should have the address of the destination let's say the other cell organelle etc so let's have a look at the model that i have created to describe the structure and function of the golgi apparatus 
may cut shapes of varied lengths to make a complete Golgi complex. Use beads or clay balls to make a few vesicles coming out of Golgi complex. Make small paper tags and pin them on the vesicles with the message as 2 nucleus, 2 mitochondria, 2 cell membrane. We can then elaborate the points that were discussed earlier in the class before this demonstration. You can then bring upon the next two cell organelles, cell storage unit, the vacuoles, and cells recycle bin, the lysosomes. Vacuoles are very easy for students to understand. For the lysosomes, you can explain that cells too have the waste products. So the lysosome is basically a vesicle with special recycling proteins that digest the recyclable waste. The non-recyclable waste is excreted out of each cell and discarded through the body through the excretory system. Thus, we have discussed all the animal cell organelles in the lesson. As a revision, you can arrange all the models we have made so far and ask the students to discuss the functions in relation to each other. Once the class has a cohesive overview about the animal cell functions, you can then move on to the plant cells. We can arrange the models to represent the plant cells and also show students the diagram of plant cells. We should discuss the distinctions between animal and plant cells. Animals are heterotrophic, whereas plants are autotrophic. So you can pose a question to students, what process makes the plant cells autotrophic? Where and how does this process take place? See, the answer to the first question comes very easily, photosynthesis. But to answer the second and third question, I suggest you to introduce the next cell organelle, chloroplast, with the help of a model. I used green plastic bottles, dishwashing scrubbers, woolen threads. Cut the green colored bottle from the side to create a wide opening. Cut the scrubbers in small round discs. Stack them over one another to make the thylakoid of the granum. Woolen threads can be connected to the thylakoids to act as a lamella. Students can label all the parts of the chloroplast using paper tags or by writing on the chart paper. We can discuss the function of stroma, thylakoid and chloroplast using some other analogies and examples also the way we have done so far. Over these classes, a lot of students have come across a lot of new key concepts and keywords and it's very important for them to remember all of these. To do this, while revision, I divided the class in groups. You can prepare two sets of cue cards with cell organelle names or diagrams on one set and their functions on the other set. Randomly distribute the cue cards among the students. Students can take turns to match the cue cards having organelle functions with the cards having organelle names. The teacher can ask probing questions to cover all the points related to the structure and function of the cell organelles. For example, So now we are finished with this activity and I'm very sure by now your students would have understood how structure and a function of cell organelle are interdependent. When I prepared for this topic with an activity-based approach, I realized what was missing in my earlier teaching methods. So with the help of these models, we are able to achieve our goal of differentiating between plant and animal cells in an activity-based approach with our students. The details of all those activities are there in the description box below. Do try all those activities and please let us know how it was. Thanks for watching.